Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to object-oriented programming as this is something that you have to understand if you want to go past the basics and actually create a more complex application. So in this video, I'm going to create some classes and instances. And as always, I'm going to use an example. And the example would be, we're going to imagine that we have to create an application for a school. Now, every school has students, teachers, and other personnel, and every one of them has attributes such as name, age, date of birth, email, gender, and so on. So what I'm going to do is I will have the first student, and if we didn't know object-oriented programming, then we would probably have, for example, student1, name, John Milner, then a student1, age, then maybe student1, gender, and so on. So this is how we would have done it. So if we have, for example, two students, then this is the code that would, we would have had. Now, let's, let me change this to, let's say, Mary Jones, 20, and then female. Now, if we have only two students with only three attributes each, we already have six lines of code plus this empty line, so seven lines. Now, if we have 100 students, if we have, um, in addition to that, teachers and other personnel with a lot more attributes, this will get really messy, and that's not what we want. So in order to avoid this mess, we're going to create a class student. And every single one of these students would be an instance of that class. And what I mean by that is student1 would be equal to student, and then here in the parentheses, we're going to pass the name, age, gender, and so on. And we're also going to have our second student again, which would be the class student, and we'll pass the arguments the attributes that are related to the second student. Now, how does Python differentiate between these two? Because as you can see, it's exactly the same. So we have student, then parentheses, student, and then parentheses. And the code, how does it make difference whether it should be related to this student or the other one? Well, every class starts with a so-called initialize function. And this is something that is that might be difficult to understand as a beginner, but it makes sense and and I'll do my best to explain it. So the initialize function is actually creating itself in a way. So when we create this instance student one, what it does is it initializes itself as a class student. So it creates itself in a way. And this is not something that we pass as our argument this is something that's automatically done at the very beginning when we create this instance. So this is something that's, that will be there anytime you create a class, but it's not being run here. Now, we would like to have, let's say, name and let's have age. Well, the next part we do is self.name equals name and self.age equals age. Now, what does this mean? Well, for student1, we're going to run this class student, then it's going to initialize itself, then we would like to specify a name. So our name would be John Milner, then we need to specify age, let's say 20. And then these arguments that we have here, John Milner and 20, are going to be linked to itself. And what is self in this case is student1. So for the second student, that would be Mary Jones 20. Now, if I print student1.name, so this would be self.name, and again, self in this case is student1. And if I print, let's say, student2.h, you will notice that the output would be John Milner, so that's the name of our first student, and 20, that's the age of our second student. Now, if we add one more, for example, let's say the gender, this is another attribute, then we have to again specify it here that that input of ours should be linked to that instance that we have. So self.gender is equal to gender. Now, what if we don't specify it here when creating that instance? 
So let's say that for the first one, we'll have male. And for the second one, I'm going to try to create the second instance by only passing the name and the age. Well, it will return an error. And as you can see, it says that in line 16, we have type error. When initializing this instance, we are missing one argument and that's gender. So just by specifying here, female, we are solving that problem. So we need to specify, these are again mandatory arguments that need to be specified when creating the instance and self is automatically passed on. Now the other part that I believe that is very important to cover in this introduction video is method. What is a method? When can you use one and how can you create one? And a method is actually a function, but the difference is you can only run it for this class. What I mean by that is let's have a variable hello and let's have another variable 25. So we know that the first one is string and the second one is an integer. So if we type print the type of x and print the type of y, we will see that the first one is string and the second one is integer. Now what we can do is we can run the lower method to the first one and we can not run the lower method to the second one. So we can turn convert the x to lowercase but we can't convert the 25 the integer to lowercase integer because that method does not exist to that class. So we have a class string and that class has this method and the integer one does not have it. So in our class student what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method called introduce which would take self so itself and it's going to return a sentence where the student would introduce himself or herself so it would be hello my name is and then plus again self dot name plus let's say dot now i'm going to remove this part but also before i run this method as you can see these six lines of code we've converted them into two and it's much more easier to to follow so i'm going to get rid of that and i'm going to focus on the method next so we can introduce for example our first student by having we would like to print that out also so student one dot introduce because it's a method and if i run this the first student would introduce himself now there is one more way to get to this method and that's by going through the class first so we can do student.introduce but now what it does what python does is goes to the class student gets the method but then well it requires self it requires actually the student so let's say here student 2 and this is something that would also work as you can see except in this case we actually pass this self argument because python gets to the class gets to the method but then it doesn't know it, which instance actually you need so if you start from the instance and you run the method then you don't have to you don't specify self because well self is the instance but if you go to the class then the method then you have to specify the instance and that would be all regarding this tutorial i hope it made things a bit clearer for you otherwise leave a question or comment in the comment section below and i will see you in the next video